Welcome back to Rape Master Anime Review Part 10. This is reviewing the last arc of the Rape Master manga, The Final Battle. This one covers basically the last, technically you can kind of think of them as the last 31 chapters of the series. 290, 265, the 295, and the epilogue chapter. A lot of stuff happens in over the course of these chapters. First of which we have Mystica, M Musica. Oh yeah, and the dragon guy's name is Lev. I completely forgot because it's been a while since I read this manga. Yeah, and his girl's name is Julia, not Juvia, like the way it is over in fairy tale. Yep. Yeah, a lot of these characters get a lot to do. I mean, M Mystica basically one thing he does in this arc, he creates Haru a new sword, and he looks after Ellie after the end of the stuff. Juvia, not Juvia, Julia get a chance to fight. Lucia's forces, like a lot of them, and of course the side characters don't do much anything. Also, one thing kind of odd about this arc is that Plu doesn't really appear that much in this final arc. As a matter of fact, he appeared in a, he barely he barely appeared in the last arc. This one, he, this one he even appears even less than he did in the last. I think he found to maybe about two or three chapters this whole arc. Yeah, he's absent of a good chunk of this. The uh, the financer of the rave of the rave gang. He shows up a lot, doesn't do much of anything, but yeah. And of course, well, you have the celestial memory thing, basically, about to almost end the world, and then somehow at the end, Haru apparently dies. Yes, Haru, the main character of the whole series, dies. Well, apparently, anyways. And they make a grave for him, though Ellie has completely forgot about him. Yep, and they jump ahead one year later where she's basically a schoolgirl. She refers to Mystica as Brother Mystica, Julia as Sister Julia, and of course, well, there's Let, who is not his dragon form anymore. Yeah, that's the thing about him. He has not been his dragon form ever since he freed Ju Julia from her dragon form as well. These two have been their human form for a majority of the series. And, oh yeah, and also... Haru defeats Lucia. Lucia kept claiming many times that Ellie is going to be his bride. And <laughs> Haru is like, nope, that woman is mine. Of course, but prior to this battle, all the characters decided to get drunk. Yep. And Mystica figures out, though, that Haru has got feelings for Ellie. And he really wants to confess to him. Confess to her. So... They both get drunk. Of course, Haru basically shows himself butt naked. And apparently, Julia gives Ellie a really strong alcohol. To look like she's probably stoned and she can't do anything. So what does Julie do in order, in order to convince Haru to confess his feelings for her? Try to strip her butt naked in front of a bunch of guys. Yep, takes off her top, takes off her skirt. Haru just like, screw that, I'm basically going complete, I'm going completely, like... Bear, bear back. Yeah. That was kind of hilarious. Yep. But as for why in the world they were they kind of revealed the whole thing about Hyrule having feelings for Ellie, it's been sort of hinted at the whole series. Because, well, he's very protective of her, and the fact that he's kind of had a thing for her ever since they first met. Yeah. Especially since he one time peeked her panties. Yep. It's kind of similar to the relationship that Natsu has with Lucy. The only difference is, Natsu's actually seen Lucy butt naked. Haru has never actually seen Lucy butt naked. Yeah. Also, Lucy gets a chance to... Not Lucy. Ellie gets a chance to bathe with... Well... Julia and... Besquita. She's one of the... She's the only female character in this series. Basically a regular. And then, of course, when we get to the final battle, which takes place in Savonia. And it's a big epic brawl. And Haru has basically has to fight to go all the way straight to Ellie. And they're they're together for a lot a lot of the period of time in this arc. And then in the pendulum, in pretty much kind of the end of the arc before the epilogue, they both confess their feelings for each other. And then of course, well, then later on Haru apparently dies. Jump ahead one year later. And of course you have Mystica driving a car. Yes, a car in a series. That cross the with fairy tale doesn't even have cars. Well, they have magic cars, but not cars with gasoline. Yep. And then, of course, well, Ellie apparently has completely forgot about him until he sees her. And 
his, her memory of him is completely restored. And then, of course, well, he, of course, asked her prior to going to the final battle, he's like, you want to have to the war? You want to go home with me to the garage island? She says, sure. She has nothing else to do, no other place to go. Why not go to the garage island? And after, after he's brought back, and, of course, they make out. Yep. I mean, the only characters prior to this who actually were a couple was Let and Julia. That's what happened with them. Not much is revealed to happen. It's unknown if these two got married. These two fight a lot. Well, she beats the crap out of her boyfriend a lot the whole course of the series. But he doesn't mind. He still loves her. Yep. And then, of course, they go back to Garage Island where, where Ellie meets Hyrule's sister. And they get along perfectly fine. And then we have sort of an ending where they get married. Yep, Ellie and Haru get married. And then we jump ahead like 10 years later where it's where the Haru and Ellie have a son. I mean, is it just me? Or it's like a lot of the time we do these time skips where the main character marries the woman he loves and they have a time skip. Almost everyone I've seen except one, except one I've seen where the main character has only just a son. Only one child, basically a boy. The only series I've read where where the main character gets with the woman he loves and they have a kid together and it's actually a girl that's always only Tokyo Ghoul. Well, Re anyways. But that's the only one. All everybody else basically just has this one kid, a son. I mean if you look at Naruto, almost all of his friends basically who had kids, almost all of them except for two basically had sons. Yep. It's kind of the same thing for this series. As for what happened to Mystica, not much is revealed about him except that he's been living with Ellie for a while and being very protective, kind of like a big brother to her, despite the fact she's he's not that much older than he she is. He's like he's like roughly like two or three years older. Yes. Also, during the final arc, he briefly sort of dies, and he sees his the woman he loves, Rena, and she doesn't come back. I think now I will get my final thoughts on basically how characters get killed off and come back in the series. Why get final thoughts? This is a good arc in the series, and I love the ending of it. Now to talk about my final thoughts, the manga, and overall the Raid Master series as a whole. The anime I thought was really good. I know that, that the, the English dub is sort of criticized for basically censoring stuff. Last time I checked the only series it did it in a period of time, Yugo did the same thing, so not really a big surprise there. Those some of the changes basically made no sense. I didn't have a problem with the music like a lot of people. Are, like, I read a lot of the reviews, basically. People didn't like the music very much. I had no problem with the music. The music was fine. It was pure fun. And I think it was a mistake for the anime to end when it did. I mean, the anime ended, like, roughly, I think, like, 13 years ago. I think it ended, right? I think so. It, let's see if I can get to it. And this, of course, is the anime. The manga ended back in 2005. Yes, 2005. Roughly three years. Actually, about a year before he started Fairy Tale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the anime ended back in 2002. So it's been like 17 years since the series ended. Is there any way possible the series come back? I have no idea. Because, well, I don't know. It's particularly very bizarre. Yeah. Now, the only way I can, I can think is a slim chance because the Gray Man came back after being gone for eight years. So after the series been gone for almost twenty years, I mean, you look at let's say DBZ. They continued that series twenty years later with Super. Yep. Where they basically brought it back with Super, and well. Maybe they could with this one. It's possible. I mean, DBZ was gone for... I mean, not counting GT as for a, a good series where people liked. And for something new in a long time since GT, not counting Kai either. And that series is well-received. This fact, the final arc is not being well-received very much. Not even the English dub for it has been, been well-received. Now, as for basically characters who died, I don't mind any of the villains died in the series. No, I don't think that was the problem. I think the only character I think this though that the writer Hisaru
Mishima. Yes, I think the only character I can think of that it was a mistake to kill off this character was Rana. Yes, I think it was a humongous mistake to kill off this character. Sheba, I don't have a problem with killing off that character because, well, he had a good fight to go by. I think Rana dying was basically a big mistake, especially since, well, Mystica has no woman to fight for. I mean, Haru's got Ellie, Let's got Julia. He? No girl for him. Because she dies in practically, I think it was like the first, let's see. Actually, no, it, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was like the very first arc, like right after the series ended is when they killed off the character because they had to deal with the Civil Race stuff. And yes, killing off this character was a mistake. And I'm surprised they couldn't use the power of the Slash to the resurrect her. I mean, they put like Haru in the epilogue, but not Rina. Yeah, she's remember the the the. I mean, heck, Steeg died and he came back, but not Rina. Really, not her. I mean, Lucia had a problem with him dying. He was he was practically the main villain after his father had died halfway through the series. It's not the only series I've seen where they actually replaced the main villain about part, about almost halfway through. The only other series I've seen like this that does, they've even Power Rangers, where they replaced the main villain halfway through that one, and that was Lost Galaxy. Though I wasn't really a big fan of the first film, anyways. But in the case of manga, generally they've had like one main villain the whole series, a lot of the time when they do this stuff, and yeah. Having him die the way that way Lucia died at the end of the series, I did not have a problem with that. That was never a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think it was great the way the epilogue ended with basically like as soon as that Haru and Ella got back to the garage on, they had their wedding. I think that was a brilliant circle genius in the part of where it's a little bit rushed to bit the ending basically go from returns the owl and then all of a sudden, poof, get married. Just like that. I'm happy these two finally got a chance to make out, which you don't see that very much in the series. We have characters make out, because the only series I can think of where you had the main character make out with the woman he loves, like in a series. I know it's happened with Naruto in the last. It's happened in. Let's see. Hmm. Let me think here. Oh yeah, Yu Hakushu did it. Basically, we had the main character make out his girl, his his love interest toward the end of the series. And there's not many series done it. I mean, a lot of series I've seen want to do it, but I guess they don't feel like doing it. I mean, if you look at let's say Bleach, yeah, Ichigo and Orihime never kissed the whole series, and yet ten years later these two basically had a child, and yet these two never made out in the series. Not even the manga they made out. Basically, it was hinted that she was in love with him since the start of the series. And then later on, she basically, in time skip, they basically got married and had a kid together. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I really enjoyed Rape Master. Nobody recommended me read, read the manga or watch the anime. I just basically felt like doing it myself. Because I like fairy tale, so why not get the Rape Master? It's some of the same person, so I figured, oh, why not check it out? I mean, yes, it is his first series. And I gotta say, it's really good. Though, I do notice, though, he does reuse stuff in the series in Fairy Tale. Like, for example, Stieg, for example. Yeah, his character design was reused for Jala. Haru, if you look at appearance wise, yeah, he just basically used that model for Natsu, Ellie, for. Lucy, though he did change up a bit, basically made a little bit taller and give her a little bigger chest. Though the only thing that changed with those two characters is their hair color. In the case of Stig, nothing was changed about him aside from the fact that his tattoo moved from a different eye. That's the only change he made aside from that, get different clothing. I mean, there's no Urza equivalent in this series. And the only thing else he did reuse from this series, aside from a few character designs, is the Erasion 6. Now, the one fairy to use is a completely different ratio on six. It's basically six people who just come together and they only appear like twice in the manga. They appear like two storics and that's it. In the anime, they appear three times. They appear in their own debut story arc, the clockwork storyline, and the current arc of the series, the Alvarez Empire. 
Actually, no. They did appear in Tartarus. They basically appear four times. They race you on six, basically a group of characters who basically have to fight their way through in order to get to their boss. At one point, they apparently died, and then it was like a retcon that, nope, they actually didn't die at all, despite the fact that, that their boss had the ability to transport them wherever he wanted to. As for how in the world they, they, they were brought back to life, or at least how they were to survive, well, it's kind of revealed they kind of reprogrammed the bit when it did end up at their headquarters, but they ended up someplace else. It's not thoroughly explained of how these characters came back despite like apparently dying as the building was as the building was just completely destroyed. Yep. Also, the woman who later dated Haru's sister, he completely disappeared halfway through the series. I mean, no mention what happened to him. Yeah, he was the main villain in the first arc of the series. He was part of the Shadow Guard. Yeah, and here's the thing about the Shadow Guard. It seems that like, though they like I would say like after like the Symphony arc, they did not play a role in the series at all. I think they showed up like once before the I think they showed up one arc before the end of the series. Yeah, the Shadow Guard who were like recurring villains throughout the first half of the series, yeah, they just were completely dropped. Yeah, they just stopped appearing. There's no mention of them. Nothing. Also, I think it's interesting, though, that this series takes place sort of in modern day, in a way, and having... I love, the, I love all the musical references they, they, they throw in here. Well, because it's called Raid Masters, so why not? And it's interesting, though, that Fairy Tale kind of kept up the same kind of tone that Raid Master did, except you'll have the characters go on an epic quest. Yeah, they're basically people work for a guild, and they just basically go on assignments. Though, at least they have a home to go home to. And at least Fairy Tale managed to that pretty much its whole series. Raymaster never did. And I, w I would not be surprised if Eden Zero somehow gets an adaptation in the future, especially since it's near reaching almost 70 chapters. Yeah, because 54 just recently came out for that series. So I would not be surprised if later on this year we get an announcement oh, Eden Zero is being adapted to anime. If, if I want to say that specific series after anime, I would say it was just A1 Pictures adapted because after all, they did a fantastic guy with Fairy Tale, so why not Eden Zero? Yeah. But yeah, that's it for Rave Master. There is nothing else to do with Rave Master because I've reviewed the anime, I've reviewed the manga. I know there's video games for Rave Master, but I don't have the game. I don't have the game, so I can't get my thoughts on the games at all. Yeah, the only games that this series put out? Two. Yes, two. Yeah. Both released the same year, like the same day as well, pretty much the same year as when the manga ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I would like to see from the series, aside from revival in the anime, is their crossover with Fairy Tale. I hope that can come in the future. I hope so. Because Fairy Tale is the only series I can think of that could cross over with Brave Master. I mean, can anybody think of any other series that could, could be a potential good series to cross over with Brave Master aside from Fairy Tale again? I can't think of any. Yep. So, yeah. That's it for this particular review, and that's it for this particular video review series, because there is nothing else to review for Raid Master. Nothing. So yeah, this review series is officially done. Mm hmm Yes, officially done. Now, I am planning, as soon as I put this video up, I will watch the next Case Ghost film. As for if I get a chance to review tonight, I probably won't, but I'll probably get a chance to review tomorrow. This is probably my, also my last video part of the today. Okay? But until you see the next, until you see the next video tomorrow, which review the ninth Case Ghost film, the review of the newest chapter seven daily scenes, and maybe also review of the tenth Case Ghost film. Okay, this is your next review. Bye.